Hello students, welcome to lecture 25 of the online course on Photonic Crystals, Fundamentals and Applications. Today's uh, lecture will be on overview of Photonic Crystal Fibers. So here is the lecture outline, we will have a brief interaction, then we will discuss about optics in a fiber. We will also talk about the guiding mechanism which will be modified total internal reflection. We'll present different designs of photonic crystal fibers and talk about the fabrication methodologies. So, when you talk about photonic crystal fiber, this gentleman comes to your mind because a photonic crystal fiber made of 2D photonic crystal with an air core was invented by this gentleman P. Russell in 1992 and the first photonic crystal fiber was reported at the optical fiber conference popularly known as OFC in 1996. So, photonic crystal fibers which are also known as microstructured fibers or porous optical fibers, this is how they typically look like. So, there are two types of core as you can see. Okay? So, one is a solid core and one is a hollow core. So, what you see here is that the core, then you have a cladding and then you have coating which is basically a plastic protection to protect your fiber. Now, you can see here that the cladding is basically having this periodic arrangement of microstructures, right, which is a 2D photonic crystal. Now, what is this core? The core can have two options. As I mentioned, it can be solid or it can be uh, hollow, right. <coughs> So, you can think of you know in the solid core fiber you have the silica glass uh, capillaries which are uh, arranged around the core in a periodic fashion and you can take the diameter of these capillaries as a D and the periodicity to be capital lambda. Same you can think of you know um, in the hollow core photon crystal fiber you can again think of silica glass capillaries which are arranged uh, around a glass tube. Okay, and this tube contains the uh, core area which is basically hollow or it is basically a air hole. So, what is important here is that you know in the first case you can see or in uh, this one it is very obvious that the refractive index of the core material is higher than that of the cladding, is not it? But in this case you know it is something interesting because the core is hollow. So, it is basically air. So, how does you know light is being guided in this particular case and what is interesting that when you have hollow core, you do not have any material, it is like air. So, there is no nonlinearity, there is no dispersion. So, it is an amazing feature to have a hollow core fiber, right. So, as you can understand that photonic crystal fibers have a wavelength scale morphological microstructure which are basically running down the length of the fiber, right. So, this structure enables light to be controlled within the fiber in a way that was not possible by the conventional you know fibers and it was not even imaginable. So, our understanding of what an optical fiber is and uh, what it does is changing because of the development of this new technology okay? and a broad range of applications are coming up based on this particular principle. So, let us look into a quick history of this photonic crystal fibers and again this gentleman should be a part of that because he invented it. So, 1992 was the year when the idea of photonic crystal fiber with air core was thought of. So, that is something amazing you know people we always know that in optical fiber the core should be having higher refractive index than the cladding. So, who would have imagined that a fiber with air core or hollow core is pos is able to you know carry light. In 1995 they actually uh, showed that you know 2D band gap exists in this kind of uh, silica air photo crystal fiber. In 1996, they completed the fabrication of the first hollow core photonic crystal fiber. In 1999, you know, hollow core photonic band gap uh, photonic crystal fiber was made, okay, and deployed. 
then in 2001 fabrication of brake fiber was done and 2003 brake fiber with you know silica and air core was also demonstrated so these are different types of uh, photonic crystal fibers and we will go into the details of each of these uh, slowly so let's look into how optics behave inside a fiber so optical fibers are basically an excellent approximation to two dimensional structures as they are basically infinitely long in the third dimension right so they are uh, nominally invariant along their length and all the interfaces are basically uh, parallel to the fiber axis so the operating principle of light traveling inside a optical fiber is well known to us and that is total internal reflection so you can actually see from this figure that this this uh, yellow portion shows the angle which is allowed for the light to go in so that they can actually you know get total internally reflected from the boundary of the core and cladding and that is how they will be guided so the reflection here is total internal reflection so you can think of the light entering the fiber within this yellow shaded angular region okay to be uh, captured and propagate that will be allowed to propagate through the fiber any any light which is outside this incident angle will not be guided right they will simply exit through the cladding so you can think of like this so light enters and it is totally internally reflected from both ends and then it keeps on traveling like that so this is the core this is cladding and on top of that there is a protection layer which is called coating so propagation light in such a structure happens in the following manner okay so light with free space propagation constant k encounters an interface between two materials which has got refractive index n1 and n2 so the component of the wave vector parallel to the interface will remain unchanged during this uh, interaction and that is basically the rule that we all know through the law of reflection and the law of refraction so what happens in law of reflection you know that the angle of incidence becomes equal to the angle of reflection so that whatever is the you know uh, parallel component to the interface which is nk sin theta that is preserved so the same amount is this component will be continuous or preserved for from reflection in the case of refraction again you can think of you know n1 sin theta 1 will be equal to n2 sin theta 2 okay so that nk sin theta is preserved in transmission as well so that is how you know the laws of reflection and refraction works now in optical fiber or you can say in fiber optics this is so important that we parameterize the problem in terms of beta now what is this beta this is basically the uh, component of uh, propagation constant along the fiber axis okay as this is a constant for a given mode of propagation okay so that's beta now because the only interfaces in a fiber that are not parallel to beta are basically the you know input and the output phases so here you can see this is beta so light introduced into uh, the fiber will be given a value of beta okay and that should maintain that value until it leaves the fiber okay whether it is in a trapped core mode or you know a mode in the cladding so always remember that when light enters the fiber it with a with a value of propagation constant beta and that should remain same for that light mode throughout the fiber so the total propagation constant for light of wavelength lambda in a medium of refractive index n can be written as nk where k is basically 2 pi by lambda uh, where it denotes the free space wave vector so what is beta then the beta is basically a component of the total wave vector which lies parallel to the fiber axis right so this is where your um, k 
lies okay and one component of it lies along uh, the fiber axis and that is beta okay to form a guided uh, mode in the core one needs to introduce light into the core with a value of beta that cannot propagate in the cladding so if that is allowed to propagate in the cladding it will simply escape right so the largest value of beta that can exist in an infinite homogeneous medium with refractive index n will be equal to so you can write beta equals n k with all smaller values of beta being allowed so we derive from beta a modal index which is written as nm that is simply beta by k the range of modal indices supported by specific materials be the conventional homogeneous material or artificially fabricated photonic crystal okay they can be anything okay so they this kind of modal indices can be used to identify ways in which they can be used to form guided modes so as with any material a 2d photonic crystal has a maximum beta value that can propagate so at a particular frequency this corresponds to the fundamental mode of an infinite slab of a material and this value of beta defines the effective refractive index of the material so the allowed values which are basically blue okay of the modal index so this is shown for air pure silica so this two dotted a uh, horizontal line marks the refractive index of silica and air so what is allowed in air is only up to this much for pure silica it can go up to here for holy silica also it can go up to here okay but it is with slightly reduced effective index and a photonic crystal structure or you can say a pcf photonic crystal fiber structure with band gaps okay it will look simply look like you know this where beta is less than k so this is an optical micrograph uh, of a standard optical fiber so you can see this is the fiber and this is the core so this is formed using two bulk materials here the core diameter is 9 micrometer okay so one can use the 2d photonic crystal as a fiber cladding at a particular frequency if the core material has a higher refractive index then this effective index is chosen okay an example of such a structure is basically a solid uh, silica core which is surrounded by a silica air photon crystal cladding so such fiber will then uh, guide light through a form of total internal reflection so though it is not a purely you know total internal reflection because the cladding here is basically uh, silica air matrix but it will definitely have you can intuitively guess that you know this solid core which is made of silica and then this region is kind of you know silica and lot of air holes periodically done so the effective index of this material will be lower than the silica core so it will also work like you know core cladding and then total internal reflection can be the guiding mechanism in this case as well so what do we call this is the standard optical fiber this is also index guiding photonic crystal fiber because here also it is guided mainly based on the difference between the refractive indices of core and cladding material so the core diameter here is 5 micron this is the one which is basically a hollow core photonic band gap fiber okay so here the guiding mechanism is completely different okay so it is basically guiding light because of the band gap okay so you have to create a 2d photonic crystal and the light that you are launching in the hollow core should lie within the band gap frequencies or band gap wavelengths so that the light cannot escape into this cladding okay so it will be helplessly traveling through this core because there is no other route to escape okay so as we understood that this is in the case of a solid core photonic crystal fiber the guiding mechanism is basically a modified total internal reflection so 
It is possible to use a two-dimensional photonic crystal as a fiber cladding by choosing a core material with a higher refractive index than the cladding effective index, right? So it makes sense. An example of this kind of structure is the photonic crystal fiber with silica solid core which is surrounded by a photonic crystal cladding that is in the form of a triangular lattice of air holes, okay? So these fibers are also known as index guiding photonic crystal fibers because they are basically guiding light through a form of total internal reflection which can be called as modified TIR or modified total internal reflection just to tell you that it is not the conventional total internal reflection mechanism. However, they have many different properties with respect to the conventional optical fibers, right? So this is a schematic of a solid core photonic crystal fiber with the triangular lattice of air holes and you can see these holes are going across the length of the fiber and this is a you know microscope image of that fabricated solid core fiber which has got you know this kind of triangular lattice of air holes drilled. Now the solid core photonic crystal fiber constitutes a triangular lattice of air holes and we can consider the hole diameter D to be about 300 nanometer and hole to hole spacing which is basically the period capital lambda and that is taken to be 2.3 micrometer. So this PCF uh, photonic crystal fiber did not ever seem to become multi-mode in the experiments even for the shorter wavelengths. So it actually only work as a single mode fiber which is which is very good right. So the guided mode always had a strong you know single central lobe which is filling the core. So this is the light confinement shown in this particular fiber. So here you can see this you know circles which actually small small circles which mark the you know uh, holes which are drilled into the fiber. So what happens you know this particular endlessly single mode behavior can be understood by viewing the air hole lattice as a modal filter. So what is that modal filter? So since light is evanescent in air, the air holes act like you know strong barrier, okay? So they are the wire mesh of this particular filter. So it, it is like a mesh that can you know hold this particular fundamental mode only, okay? So the field of the fundamental mode which fits into the silica core with a single lobe of diameter okay between zeros is slightly equal to 2 lambda okay you can think it of as a grain of rice that cannot escape a wire mesh okay so it is something that it is actually blocked here so it will be there and the silica gaps between the air holes belonging to the first ring around the core become is too narrow on the other hand you can think of the lobe dimension of the higher order modes becomes smaller so they can actually slip between the gaps okay and that is how they are able to escape so what is important as you can see the ratio d by lambda d is the you know diameter of the air holes and uh, lambda is the periodicity so this fraction that is basically the air filling fraction of the photonic crystal cladding okay is important and if this fraction increases successive higher order modes will become trapped. So you can do a proper geometry design of this fiber cross section to guarantee that only the fundamental mode stays there only the single mode or the fundamental mode gets guided all other you know, uh, modes will leak out. So it becomes a endlessly single mode fiber, which is very, very important for long distance or long haul communication. For triangular photonic crystal fibers, this occur at D by lambda less than 0 0.4. If you maintain this particular ratio, you will be able to achieve that fit, okay? So by exploiting this uh, geometry, it is possible to design very large mode 
area fibers which can be successfully employed for high power delivery amplifiers and even lasers. Moreover, by doping the core okay, in order to slightly reduce its refractive index, light guiding can be uh, turned off completely at uh, wavelengths shorter than a certain threshold value. Right? So, those kind of functionalities can be added when you dope the silica core. So, optical fiber designs are completely different from the traditional ones, okay, which result from the fact that the photonic crystal cladding has gaps okay, in the range of the supported modal index, which is beta by k, uh, where there are no propagating modes. These are the photonic uh, crystal, photonic band gaps of the crystal, okay which are similar to the two dimensional band gaps that could characterize the planar light wave circuits. Okay? But in this case, um, they have propagation with a non-zero value of beta. So, it is important to underline that gaps can appear for values of uh, modal index both greater and smaller than unity uh, that enables the formation of you know, hollow core fibers with band gap material as a cladding. So, because the modal index less than unity or less than 1 is possible, that is how you can actually think of this hollow core fiber. So, here is the schematic of a hollow core fiber. This white region tells you that these are air holes. So, the core is basically larger air hole, okay, and this is the microscope image of this beautifully fabricated hollow core triangular um, photonic crystal fiber and this is possible because the modal index less than unity is supported. So, photonic band gap guidance. These fibers which cannot be made using conventional optics are related to the Bragg fibers since they do not uh, basically rely on total internal reflection for guiding light. In fact, in order to guide light by total internal refraction, it is necessary to have you know a lower index uh, cladding material surrounding the core. And uh, here there are no suitable lowless material okay, with refractive index lower than air at optical frequencies and that is how this fiber which is having a hollow core is the most you know less lossy fiber that you can think of. So, <clears throat> the first photonic crystal fiber that exploited this photonic band gap effect to guide light was reported in 1998 and you can see this is the one okay, that they made. So, this is the schematic of the cross section of the first photonic band gap photonic crystal fiber okay with a honeycomb air hole lattice so hollow core guidance okay had to wait until 1999 so the first cons it was made in 1998 okay and in 99 okay hollow core guidance when the pcf fabrication technology had advanced to a point where larger air filling fractions required to achieve photonic band gap for air guiding became possible. So, with that you, you can notice here that an air guided mode must have beta by k less than 1. Since this condition will guarantee that the light is free to propagate and form a mode within the hollow core and it will make it impossible for that mode to escape into the cladding. So, the first hollow core photonic crystal fiber was this one as you can see okay, had a simple triangular lattice of air holes okay, and uh, the core was basically made of uh, removing this uh, seven capillaries at the center of the fiber cross section. So, the parameters are given here the hole to hole spacing that is lambda was 4.5. 9 micrometer and the core diameter here was 
14.8 micrometer okay so by producing a relatively large core the chances of finding a guided mode were improved okay when white light was launched into the fiber colored modes were transmitted what does it indicate it indicates that the light guiding exists only in restricted wavelength range okay and that range usually coincide with the photonic band gap of the surrounding medium of the cladding so you can say that you know this is how the guiding takes place but this is your um, for the solid core you know that this is the uh, solid medium and this is the photonic crystal that is around surrounding the core has a lower refractive index so you are basically having a modified uh, ref total internal reflection which is also known as index guiding mechanism in the case of hollow core you can see that you are basically taking help of photonic band gap so if the light that is launched in the hollow core lies within the photonic band gap it cannot you know um, escape from the cladding and it will be guided throughout so this one is more or less very similar to the conventional uh, fibers but this is something very very unique and it is coming from the photonic band gaps so let us now discuss about different designs of photonic crystal fibers so here you can see the first one is basically a single mode fiber with pure silica core so this is a pure silica core and this is the cladding and how do you make the cladding to have slightly reduced uh, refractive index than the solid silica core is by drilling holes periodic holes in it okay so what is the mechanism of light guidance here it is again total internal reflection you can call it as modified tir this is what you have seen this is basically air guiding fiber that means you have a hollow core which is surrounded by a 2d photonic band gap crystal so that you know light cannot escape into this so here the guiding mechanism is completely different this one is again a different one here the light is confined in a low index region by a photonic band gap so here the core is made not air core it is basically made of silica while the holes in the cladding are basically you know uh, filled with high index liquid so similar kind of contrast in uh, refractive index is created here so that the modal index that is beta by k can be less than 1 and this is a hollow cylindrical multi-layer fiber which is basically a brack fiber okay with a all solid cladding so you can see periodic uh, bragg reflector kind of arrangement over here so now we will see electron micrographs of this pcf the first one we have already seen okay so this is basically a band gap guiding fiber so in which light is basically trapped in a ring of glass around the central hole okay like this figure b basically shows you a strongly total internal reflection guided PCF with zero dispersion and it was uh, achieved at 800 micrometer wavelength. Figure C shows you an extruded fiber which is formed from the commercial SF6 class and figure D is the figure of showing in hollow core so this is basically air okay and it's a photonic band gap fiber so now let us look into the fabrication methodologies how do you make this amazing fibers so this is a schematic for making fiber okay and this, this is a schematic of uh, stack and draw method okay so first you will be stacking the preform of the photonic crystal fiber then this is the you know fiber drawing method where there is a furnace we'll come to that okay and this is how the preform is prepared 
okay so the method as you can see is generally similar to that used for other optical fibers so what is important here is to first make a preform which is of the scale of centimeter in size so this is how you know a preform pcf preform looks like and then you use heat to you know to heat up the preform and draw it down a much smaller diameter and uh, typically it is of the order of the diameter of human hair okay and shrinking the preform cross section okay but you have to maintain the same features so all these features of capillaries need to be maintained here so what you are doing you are heating and passing it through a very small diameter so that you can get a diameter of the order of micrometers right so this way you know uh, from a single preform kilometers several kilometers of uh, optical fibers can be produced and it will be you know packed in a bobbin so air holes are most commonly created so you have to create air holes if you are talking about you know hollow core fibers so in that case you know you put a hollow rod rod in inside the bundle and when you heat up the bundle okay that fuse this hollow rod rods they fuse to a single rod okay and that is how you can create a you know large uh, kind of hole area okay and this has to be done before uh, drawing so this method is called drawing okay although drilling milling was used to produce the first aperiodic design okay but uh, this formed the subsequent basis for producing the first soft glass and polymer structured fibers so now most photonic crystal fibers are basically fabricated in silica glass so micrographs of fabricated pcfs are shown here so this is the same fiber shown in different magnification so that you can clearly see what is the hole size that is 3.02 micrometer the pitch or the periodicity is 4.07 micrometer and the core size that you can see here is basically 5.77 micrometer and the overall diameter is 123 micrometer okay and the periodic cladding region is basically um, spanning over almost 60 micrometer so what is important here the d by lambda ratio for this fiber it was at 0 0.74 this is a solid core fiber right so experimentally the fabricated pcfs guide light at 1550 so this one guide lights at 1550 then you can have light guiding at 690 580 so all of them are showing different colors okay and note that in the case of uh, you know um, 690 and 580 it is not single endedly it is not endlessly single mode some higher order modes were also seen okay and the cladding guidance was basically observed in this particular cases okay so with that we'll stop here so we will start the discussion of in detailed analysis of index guiding photonic crystal fibers in the next lecture if you have any doubt or query regarding any part of this lecture you can drop an email to this particular email address mentioning mooc and photonic crystal on the subject line thank you mm -hmm.